Hello, I'm Richard Ridge for Broadway World. Up next for the Kennedy Center's Broadway Center Stage is the beloved musical Bye Bye Birdie, which will run from June 7th through the 15th, and we drop by the rehearsal room to meet the stellar cast and bring you a sneak peek. This is my second time throwing together a show this fast at the Kennedy Center, and Jeffrey Finn creates a really calm environment where he, everyone feels safe and feels like they are there to have fun. And so that's already happening. On day four, we've gotten a lot done, as you saw. Um, so I'm just thrilled to get to D.C. and be in that incredible historic theater. How excited are you to be a part of Bye Bye Birdie? So excited. I mean, this is a, it's a show that means a lot to me. I did it when I was younger. I got my equity card doing it here at Encores and now, with Mark Bruni. And now here we are again, a, a considerable amount of time later. But, you know, <laughs> but here I am. Yeah. I just, honestly, I've never, besides seeing the movie a long time ago, I've never had experience with the show. And especially Conrad getting to be a black guy for the first time. There's so many people that I'm getting to, like, lean into that I think maybe Elvis kind of took from, honestly. So I'm really excited just to pay homage to some of these people and to put my own spin on it. And, you know, again, just do something that's just a lot of fun. I feel like everybody knows Bye Bye Birdie because everybody has seen like a high school or community production of it and so it's lived on in that way and so people are familiar with it, they're familiar with the movie, but to get to do it today at this level I think is going to be so exciting and refreshing and I mean Charles Strauss and Lee Adams, like their music and lyrics just live on, they're timeless, this like classic musical comedy meets rock and roll, it's just, it's amazing. Kids, they are disobedient, disrespectful oops, noisy, crazy, sloppy, lazy, loafers, while we're on the subject, kids, you can talk and talk to your faces blue. Kids, but they still just do what they want to do. Why can't they be like we were, perfect in every way? What's the matter with kids today? I was so excited when I got the offer. I was like, I need this. I need this fun, fun, hilarious role, and I need to be this man's wife. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't believe it. I know. Yeah, it's wonderful. I'm playing Mae Peterson. What I love about her is she's mother with a capital M. I'm sort of mother with a capital M in my own mind. I have a son, so I have a head start in terms of this character. I just love it, and you're right. It's a little intimidating when you're playing a character that's like a vocabulary word. You know what I mean? People know everything about her already, but hopefully I'll bring something special to it. We'll see what happens. Maybe not. It's such a beloved musical. Why do you think it, it moves on generation after generation and lives on? I think because it's hilarious and it's classic and it's fun and it tells somehow a, a true-ish sort of American story about what it is, you know, seeing young kids off the war and like how we're kind of having to cope with that and how we have to like sometimes go blow off steam and, and celebrate each other, and celebrate the moments that we do have. And just there's so much to it, again, that's in good fun that we get to just celebrate in the midst of all the chaos uh, that speaks to the times always. I think everybody relates to it in some, in some way. And um the message is, is one of inclusion. It's not one of um, some of the ickiness that was in the oh, in original. Yeah. yeah, and so I think that, um, and also the energy. You can't resist that kind of energy and that kind of the dancing and the, the, the humor, and everybody needs that. Yeah, the, um, the girl wants to rebel. The parents want her to settle down. She learns that life is not about rebelling, but about... Uh, not conforming, but growing up, that, that what, what the journey of growing up is all about. And I think that's what, that's what this is, and everybody goes through it, everybody remembers, and a lot of people are parents now, and are having to deal with the same thing. Now my life is rosy, since I found my Rosie, with a girl like Rosie, how could I be I'm playing Rosie. Um, she's incredible. I just love her. I, I love that she has such power and agency, even though in her station she is a secretary and she, you know, you could 
feel like she doesn't have a lot of um, opinions or ways to move through the world, but she's resourceful and she finds her ways and she gets things done. She's smarter than anybody, and I love her. I love the relationship with Albert is you know fraught because of his he needs to grow a little bit, but she has patience and she waits and and it's beautiful. Well, just for me, listening to the material that I am responsible for. I just fell in love with these songs all over again because I used to listen to this album in high school like when I was in my bedroom drawing and it was one of the LPs that I had, the original cast. And so I knew it, but I didn't know it like top to bottom. The score is unbelievable and different styles. You know, it was just when like rock and roll was starting to kind of seep into musicals and so all of Birdie's numbers are like actually great, iconic rock and roll songs. And then you have all the album material. Talk to me is my favorite song in the whole show. I'm so lucky.